aspect of this. That's so awesome. And then it's funny too, because one of the things I want to chat about is exercise. And you, you, you playfully describe the fact that we are moist robots with superpowers if we know how to properly program the interface. Right. And you talk in depth about the importance of exercise and nutrition and rest. Um, so I just imagined you running where not only was that giving you the time, uh -huh. it was also giving you the vitality and the energy yeah, absolutely. to do it. Can you talk to us about what you've discovered on that front in terms of the moist robot and, and programming and all that good stuff? Yeah, first a little background. Uh, I'm a trained hypnotist. I learned hypnosis skills in my 20s. I thought maybe it'd be a career, but it turns out to be you know, yet another skill to layer on, uh, on top of things. Um, so that, that really formed the basis of my moist robot philosophy. And the moist robot really just says that your body is um, a mechanical thing like any other robot in the sense that it is not immune from cause and effect. You know, if you put the right food in it, you get a pretty predictable result. And if you put the wrong food, you get another result. Um, and that our mind is maybe a little bit... Um, a little bit of an illusion, really. We're just kind of bouncing around. But within that context, you can still uh, change things. And the things you can most easily change, the things you have a lot of control over, um, are your diet and your fitness. So within the, the realm of the moist robot philosophy, I described a way to approach diet and fitness, which, by the way, I don't recommend anybody use because I'm not a doctor and you shouldn't, you shouldn't look at it that way. right? So in the book, I, when I talk about uh, diet and exercise, it's in the context of explaining how a system works. Since everyone's different, your system should be different than mine, but you should know what a system is, all right? That's the important part. Uh, and the, the most important distinction is um, I have a, a coworker, um, I'm a co-founder on uh, my startup that I'm working on who runs marathons and you know, he's been in Ironman and stuff like that. Everything that works for me doesn't work for him and vice versa. There's no way his system and my system can ever be together because running just hurts for me. All right, I just, I just hate it. So here's the system I came up with. If you were to take all of the elements of fitness that are important, imagine you, you went to the library and it's just books on books. Now, some of it's repetitive, you know, because there aren't that, you know, people talk about the same stuff a lot, but you can, you can dig forever about what you should eat and when and what kinds of reps and lightweights and heavyweights and then are you a man or a woman? Are you young or old? Uh, do you have a health problem? There's a million things. But it turns out that there's one thing that just floats above all of the other things in the fitness realm. If you get the one thing right, everything else actually takes care of itself over time. And that was, that was sort of my... Um, uh, recognition with myself. And that one thing is that you do it every day, right? Um, and when I say it, I mean you're active. And I don't overdefine that as did I run 10 miles every day, but rather sometimes it's cleaning the garage. Sometimes it's a long walk for the dog because that's all you have in you. But what's important is that you're taking it from the realm of thinking about it every day. Do I exercise? How I exercise? And you try to move it as much as possible into the realm of habit. Move it into the brain that is no longer subject to your rational mind coming up with reasons why you shouldn't do it. So what I do is I simply do it every day at the same time. I'm going to do it. Um, I'm actually in my exercise clothes. I'm going to do it right after we're done. <clears throat> and I've committed it to such a habit that at about 11 a.m. every day, my foot is tapping and my body is starting to vibrate. And if I go the extra step, which is a trick my hypnosis uh, instructor taught me, actually, and I put on my... Um, my exercise clothing, especially the, the, the athletic footwear, my body just keys into this program that it's used to. It just says, oh, I know what that feeling is. That means we're getting ready to go exercise. And it just, it just boots the subroutine like any, any good computer. Now, if you don't believe that's true, the next time you absolutely don't feel like exercising, just put on your exercise clothes, give yourself permission to not exercise, and just walk around the house for a little while. Chances are, pretty high chance, probably an 80% chance, you're going to start saying to yourself, well, I got my clothes on. You might as well at least walk around the block. You might as well do something. Um, and, and you'll find that once you've built the habit, um, you end up going to the gym. You hang around other people who are uh, uh, equally interested. You have conversations. You say, what did you try? You tried that thing. Over time, trial and error, you learn what works for you. Now, if you looked at my actual exercise routine um, at the gym, you would say, that doesn't look like what most people are supposed to be doing, and it isn't. 
right? It's just something that happened to work for me in particular. Um, now, your, your users are not going to see um, the video on this. Um, so we're, we're talking live on, on Skype. And I'm going to do something uh, terribly narcissistic. I'm going to, I'm actually going to show you my six pack. Let's do it. We got the, I was going to say, you, you got the Nike, you got the Nike swoosh rocking it. So, 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 so I don't know if, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can see here, but so, so I'm about 60 years old, um, meaning, well, I'll be 59. Uh, I'll report in, he's looking jacked. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the coming year. Chances are you've never seen anybody my age who isn't doing something professional that would look anything like the way I've sculpted my body. And I put no effort into it. I eat anything I want all day long. And again, on the fitness side, the trick, the system, if you will, is that I've learned over the years, and I, I put great effort into this, uh, learn how to flavor the foods that are already good for me. So if, if I said to you, or let's say not you, but let's say uh, you know some regular person who's not paying attention to their diet, if I said, start eating healthy tomorrow, everything they put in their mouth would be sawdust and you know cardboard and plastic. And that's what it would taste like because they wouldn't know how to flavor it. They wouldn't know how to prepare it. And if they did, maybe it would take so long that they say, damn it, I'm, this is all so hard. Mine is, I, I don't even cook things. Most of the things I eat are raw. <laughs> so there's no preparation time. Um, I know how to get enough proteins. I've solved for that. But anyway, the, the point is that if you simply uh, learn how to um, flavor the good foods, and if you go out of your way to learn which foods are good, uh, that it, you, you change your effort from one of willpower, which is painful and will eventually talk you out of eating well, into one of knowledge. So I, my system summarized for diet is that I convert the need for willpower into simple knowledge that I accumulate over time. I'll give you an example. Um, the listeners can play along with us. Let's say I go to the salad bar and you and I both want to eat healthy. Maybe we're watching our, our uh, waistlines and it's a terrible salad bar and all it has is a white potato and some plain pasta. And if I were to say to you, which do you pick? Now I say this in front of an audience and I, I won't put you on the spot, but I think you actually know the answer is that the glycemic index of those two things turns out to be quite different, right? Now, neither of them are, are health foods per se, but if you pick the potato and I pick the pasta and you kept picking those choices and I kept picking my choices, you would think that you and I were eating the same food and you must have, that I must have a fast metabolism because I'm, I'm not gaining weight. The truth is I just knew that the glycemic index of pasta was low compared to a white potato so I chose correctly. I used knowledge. Maybe you had to use willpower because now you've got to eat less. Uh, I didn't need any of that. So if you combine some kind of a system of learning for your diet and just say, um, I'm going to eat as much as I want whenever I want. That's really what I do right now. It's just that it'll only be good stuff. And over time, I'll make sure I know how to flavor it. Um, and then for fitness, you just make sure you do it every day and you're going to be, you're going to be around people who care about that stuff and give you tips and you'll, you'll pick it up by osmosis. Yeah. There's so much in there and thanks for the six pack show. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the couple of things I want to highlight, the, the distinction you made, which was another one of the things I wanted to make sure we talked about of, if you want to make anything a habit, don't say you're going to do it Monday, Thursday, and every other Wednesday, do it every day. And you know, you say the worst thing you can possibly do is to decide which day you're going to do it. Install the habit, put it into the system robot style so that it just gets done. Um, and then even with the, with the nutrition too, you, you make the distinction of losing 20 pounds as a goal, consistently getting a little bit better and eating well is a system. Right, so we want to orient toward that and, and have the same willingness to fail that you do entrepreneurially, where, wow, when I ate that, I tested it and that just didn't quite work. And I tried this approach and I felt yeah. that way. Let me try something else and we're getting a little so, bit better. So, so let, let me compare that approach to someone who is trying just the willpower, let's say the, um, you know, just the push the, put the spoon down, push the you know, chair away from the table approach. Let's say you're doing that one and I'm doing my system. I'm learning stuff and you're, you're using your willpower. Now, let's say at the end of two months, you've lost 10 pounds because people do, right? People can lose a lot of weight with their willpower. But you check back in a year, chances are, because willpower is hard to maintain, you may have gained back your weight. Let's say I've gained back my weight too. Let's say at the end of the year, we did nothing. Like we, we both struck out. 
But you know, you're going to try it again, right? People don't die at once in their life and say, well, I tried it once when I was 25 and that didn't work out. The second time we try it, I'm starting from second base, all right? I, I already know what to eat, but I, I don't know enough, right? I haven't, I haven't taken it to whatever level is sufficient to make a different for, difference for my body. So I might be two steps away. You're starting from scratch again with your goal that didn't work. And even in some, some cases, uh, a couple steps behind scratch, because now you're feeling worse and you don't feel like you know what you need to do versus you have a experimenter's lab coat on, you're willing to test <laughs> different things and really know that the systems will deliver the long-term results. And, and I don't have a specific time frame in mind mm -hmm. so that um, yeah. in my example, I really wouldn't be checking in a year. I, I would just say, do I know more today than I knew yesterday? That, that would be my metric. Yeah, and it's the deciding versus wanting. It's not a, you know, oh, I kind of wish I was doing this, whatever. I'm going to do whatever it takes for however long it takes to get to a place where it's effortless for me to maintain an energy level that's that's optimal. The, the book that I would recommend that people read is called Habit, uh, Charles Duhigg. Mm-hmm. And he talks about the the fairly recent science of habit and how you do want to move those some elements to habit as much as you can. Let me, let me just say one other thing about that, about exercise, about doing it every day. Several times a year I do this. I put on my exercise clothes. I'm still not really feeling it, but I figure I'll drive to the gym because it usually works out. I get there, I park, I walk into the gym, I go into the middle of the gym. I literally stand in the middle of it. I look around and sometimes, about four times a year, I say, nope. And I literally turn directly around and walk straight out the door, get in my car and drive home. And here's the key. It's a success. You won. It's a success because I'm working a system. My system is, did I go every day? Mm -hmm. Right. And if only four or five times I have to turn around, well, that's really just common sense within the system. It's not, you know, those days I really just didn't have it. So um, i never have the sensation that my exercise isn't working. I have, only have the exercise that, you know, maybe something blew up that day. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Charles Duhigg, The Power of Habit. And and you referenced even putting on your shirt. When you were describing that, I was thinking of Charles Duhigg. And he would describe that as a cue, right? So we have a cue, which then subconsciously triggers the habit that in our model here, we have the robot that, you know, NASA supercomputer subconscious mind that we've hypnotized by putting on the clothes is now going and effortlessly doing that which we otherwise had to struggle to do. Yeah. In, in hypnosis, we would, we would call it a trigger. Cool. Or, or a key. Yeah, yeah. Or a key. A key or a trigger. Those would be the two words. And so.